Okay, um, uh, great. So this is our empathy cafe on uh, how might Extinction Rebellion uh, address conflict uh, more effectively. And oh, Martha is joining us. Oh, we got two more. Some Eva. people are joining us. Hi, Martha. Hi, Eva. You manage, Martha. <clears throat> oh, some people do pop in a little bit late. Okay. <laughs> So I was just getting started. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is our, what is our topic here is uh, how might uh, Extinction Rebellion address uh, conflict and mediate conflict uh, better? And uh, so everybody here is familiar with the process, so we don't need to do too much of an introduction, uh, which yeah. is good. I always like to just move right into it. So, yeah. Um, we have yeah. new participants. Sally, the oh, Sally yeah. knows. First of all, we are recording. So, everybody, if you ac don't accept See, recording. I'm not aware of a similar situation in my 21 years in the FBI. Um, this is a very oh, We're getting some background sound. Somebody's watching uh, MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's the, the Google document for if you want to go into that document and write your name and contact info. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think everyone here is familiar with the empathy circle. It's almost like we can just go right into one. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me, usually I show the, the video of how to do the empathy circle and it gives me a chance to create the breakout rooms. But we, it looks like we don't need to do that. So, um, I don't know, does somebody want to say something while I create the breakout rooms? <laughs> well, should we uh, do a short check-in? Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I forgot that. Totally. I'm totally spaced out. I did this, uh, I did this uh, empathy cafe yesterday with uh, uh, some XR founders, uh, Sakina Rather. Oh, with Martha, too, was there. Yay. Uh, and with uh, Rupert Reed. So, it was like really exciting. And I've been working, you know, flat out trying to organize all the materials. I feel sort of unprepared for today. But yeah, mm -hmm. Bill, if you would lead us. And while you're doing that, I'll, I'll create the breakout rooms. Sure. Okay. So uh, just to ask that people take, you know, uh, 30 seconds to a minute and just kind of do a short check-in. Bob, would you like to lead us off? Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is one of the highlights of my week, and it is always a treat and a joy. Um, in the United States, every pay period, when you get your paycheck, you have deductions to the federal government and our state government. And so at the end of the year, when you do your tax forms, do you pay more or do you get some back? And today, Elizabeth and I went to our tax guy and we get some back. So we're very, very happy. All right. Good. And, and, and where, where are good you? And life is good and good health and we are grateful for so many things. That's Thank great. You. And Bob, if you could just say where you are. Oh, Thousand Oaks, California. And the photo behind me was taken about 10 years ago in Lake Tahoe at sunset. And this is a great. lovely sunset over Frio Peak at Lake Tahoe. Great. Okay. Andrea? Mm. Hi, everybody. It's my second time on the Empathy Circle, but I've been really... I, I didn't make it last time because I've been having a lot of health issues lately. And, um, but I've been very, very engaged in uh, watching a lot of recordings, including the one yesterday, which I thought was really exciting. So, yeah, I'm, I, I enjoy being here. And I'm Great. in Nuremberg in Germany. Great. Eva? Hi, from Toronto. Uh, a very cold day, it's minus 11 for now. Uh, I've been part of Empathy Circle and I am focusing on empathy, empathic uh, dialogue and empathic thinking. So each meeting is a gift for me. I, I don't have any agenda. 
which I like it more <laughs> like that. So, uh, yeah, and I'll also I am ADHD and family coach, so it's really helping me opening up new uh, perspective about my professional life too. So thank you. Great. James. Hi, everyone. I am uh, James. I'm in Syracuse, New York. Um, I hate self-introductions. I hate um, check-ins. And I love telling people what I really think. I like empathy circles. I like paraphrasing. Um, I've been involved in various kinds of empathy circles for many, many years. Um, glad to be here. Great. Glad to have you, James. Thanks. Sally. Sally, you, uh, do you, you want to get, you're muted, Sally. There you go. Hi, um, Sally from Kathy's Valley. I'm near Yosemite. Um, <clears throat> I'm concerned um, about our um, future as a planet with um, a, you know, a, someone that hates the environment in charge. <laughs> and so I'm trying to use this approach because it's kind of like greasing the machine to get it work more effectively and because if you take the wrong approach, when you, you go after um, the, the non-believers in um, climate change, um, you know, with the, wrong, with the wrong approach, you can really turn them off. Great. I'm complete. Oh, thank you, Sally. Okay, Marta? Hi, um, I'm in uh, uh, Cork, uh, in Ireland, and yeah, a bit like Edwin, I feel it, it, after yesterday's call, like I'm not, <laughs> I'm on a bit of an altered state, uh, but but very happy to be here with you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Carolina. Hi, my name is Karo, Karolina. Uh, I'm calling from Poland, Central Europe. I'm a little bit tired today. Um, we'll see how it will go. Uh, I'm also a member of XR local group and uh, IST region and obviously at Empathy Circle team. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. And Sinead. Sinead, can you hear us? You okay, are muted. She... Hi. <clears throat> ah, um, yeah, I'm in Ireland, um, XR Ireland. Um, I think I might be stepping back from it. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure. I think I am, though. I think I really am this time. <laughs> and. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm feeling quite tired today, but um, I have a moment and I thought I'll, I'll slip into the Empathy Cafe and practice and, you know, say hi and, yeah, Great. feel other people. that will be nice. Great to see you. Okay. Um, my name is Bill. I'm here in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and I'm a member of the Empathy Tent team and also taking the XR facilitator training or I'm in the process of. Edwin? Okay, and uh, Edwin Rutsch from the San Francisco Bay Area and part of the XR Empathy Circle work group. And we're gonna go into the, uh, everybody here is familiar with the process so we can avoid that and uh, sharing how to do that. And so I created two groups, so there's gonna be five in each, in each group. And Bill, uh, would you facilitate the second one and do the recording over there? Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think we're ready for the breakout rooms. Open all rooms and see you in the breakout rooms. 
and the topic is conflict in XR, how to address it, if you, or whatever is alive in you. So exciting to see how the, the Zoom gods, or Edwin, for that matter. How the what? Mixes up. <laughs> Why not assign part participant? Whoa, let me just see. Somebody didn't get assigned. Oh, Kevin, he can join us. Somebody joined really late. Uh, send them to our group, I guess. Okay. Okay, so we can get we can get uh, started if someone wants to select who to speak to. Hi, Kevin. Um, so it's a little larger group, but uh, whoever would like to start, select who you like to speak to, and we can begin. And the topic is how to address conflict in in XR. How do we uh, address it better? And I can keep time. It'll be five minute turns. I could, I could give it a go. Already? Start. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Uh, James, would you be happy to listen to me? Go for it. Great. Um, yeah. I think it was two weeks ago, and I felt um, a bit frustrated at the end because I, I felt I didn't quite get to what I wanted to say. Um, so I'll try again. <laughs> um, um, like everywhere, it's rife. Um, there, there's, there's this kind of conflict, that kind of conflict, and you know, I think. It, people are generally quite united um, in what the end result would be in that, you know, this kind of world where we take care of the earth in a way that, you know, humans can live on it. So it's good to have that kind of uniting goal. You want to reply that much? Sure. Uh, you participated two weeks ago. You had, um, you felt unheard or you wanted to bring back some of what uh, you're still holding and so and try it again to communicate what you're holding. Um, com um, conflict you're finding is rife in the XR community and and uh, you said that you feel that people have the um, the, the right or the same goals um, in in working together? Mm. I, I think, you know, with regards specifically, so, you know, I would have had conflict and, you know, somebody said, well, let's do a restorative circle, you know. Um, the thing about restorative circles is they're actually, they require some facilitation. Like, you know, you, you, I wouldn't just trust anyone. I have been, you know, I know some really fantastic facilitators. Um, and I would trust them, but I wouldn't just trust anyone. Um, whereas I think the empathy circle approach is a good first step. I think it's possible that, you know, this is a good, okay, so this con conflict, it's like anyone can facilitate an empathy circle, no offense, but it isn't, you know, I think that's the beauty of it is that it is actually really a simple process and it could be enough to resolve the tensions in the first place. And I suppose ultimately, as a first step, if that worked, that would be great. That would be, I would like to see that in, you know, in a protocol, I suppose, for when people have conflict, that they try this method. And if it doesn't work, then then they would go to the kind of experienced facilitators in, for example, restorative circles, which are also very beautiful. That's a lot. Want to try and repeat it? Yes. Um... So you're aware of restorative circles and um, you know good facilitators in that um, practice and someone had suggested to you to um, perhaps use a, a restorative circle um, for a conflict and your concern is that it requires a decently skilled facilitator and you wouldn't trust and just anyone 
whereas the process that uh, of empathy circles is something that's a little simpler. And you said anyone could do it, anyone could facilitate it, and you see it as a useful uh, first step when a conflict arises and you'd like to see it if there were um, a protocol for engaging conflict, perhaps that people begin with the empathy circle. Yeah, and then move on to restorative circles. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel fully heard. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, Eva, would you hear me? Would you paraphrase me? I will try my best, of course. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, um, I agree um, with uh, a lot of what uh, uh, Sinead has just said um, about restorative circles requiring some uh, familiarity and, and skill to, to um, successfully uh, carry out and that there's something um, simpler about the empathy circle process um, that is helpful. And just really just the, the, the reflection of um, even going through that mechanical process of um, repeating what someone is saying. I am uh, in a local group that does workshops with uh, incarcerated and formerly incarcerated people. And we are forming a, uh, a facilitation team. We generally have four facilitators that do a workshop. And as soon as we formed the team, conflict broke out. And um, I can't get any of them to do any empathy together with anyone. They just outright refuse. They won't give me empathy and they won't allow me to paraphrase what they say. They, a, few, a few of the facilitators have told me that doing that is offensive. And okay, can I, can oh, I yes, absolutely. kindly stop you? Yes. Uh, I hear you are working on a group of uh, conflict breakout and I hear you have some concerns on understanding, expressing empathy and, uh, and I hear you agree with what Jeanette said about empathy circles, familiarity and uh, skills of the facilitators. Uh, so I hear you are seeking a way to bring more empathy to XR empathy groups and more empathy to people who you are together with under the title of empathy. Thank you. Um, close. You, okay. I, 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 so please, I, please I, uh, fine. I personally, I make some distinctions. I, I don't know if they're really worthwhile going into, but um, I don't use the term empathy because I think it's possible to have silent empathy. And I don't like to confuse that with the process of reflecting or paraphrasing what someone is saying. Uh, they're very similar. And, and it's just that, so uh, I talk about uh, paraphrasing rather than empathizing okay. because it's possible to, to have empathy with, without saying a word, but it's not possible to demonstrate active listening without doing it and saying what we understood someone to say. Mm -hmm. I hear you like using paraphrasing instead of empathy where you 
can also hear the silence in people and uh, make sure people are heard with their own opinions. Yeah, it's just a it's it's just a way of talking about it. You could also say, you know, active empathy or versus silent empathy. Yes, um, but but specifically um, in the group that I'm working in, I know that there's a lot of empathy. There are people who care, uh, the people who um, want to engage conflict, but for some reason that particular practice of actively empathizing and paraphrasing what someone says, they are against it. Uh, I hear you already have uh, in the groups, you feel there is empathy already, but in the, at the same time, you have the feeling of when you when it's time for active empathy, you are having some conflicts or some uh, discomfort on maybe defining the empathy. Uh, close enough. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, would you reflect? I will try my best. <laughs> I, I like hearing different perspectives of empathy uh, with ex people's experience. And I am happy that we are not discussing on how to avoid conflict. The word there is very important to me. The title of this meeting is to how to mediate conflict. So you're <laughs> saying that you uh, you appreciate other people hearing other people's um, uh, perception of the Empathy Cafe, and you're uh, you're glad that we're talking about. Uh, and some unlocked and thought. Um, you're happy that we're talking about, about it. And uh, I'm terrible. That's okay, you want I'm me sorry. to repeat? Pardon uh, me? I, would you like me to repeat? Yes, please. Yeah. So the title of this meeting part in particular is how to mediate conflict and i like the word mediate instead of conflict because when you are mediating it's more like sharing and walking together instead of uh, avoiding the different ideas so in the context of mediating conflict um you like the uh, fact that mediating is um, is to uh, is to avoid conflict. Is that correct? Uh, well, not quite actually. The word avoid. I want to avoid the word avoid. <laughs> so I like, and I wish I could really. Uh, avoid the word avoid because i think the conflict we have in our lives is because we want to avoid people and their feelings we don't welcome ideas that we don't like it's easier to avoid ideas that we don't like so you uh, you do not like the word avoid, um, av avoid um, almost um, yeah mediate mediate allows you to uh, address um, address uh, the conflict and not 
to avoid the conflict. You don't like avoid because you find that avoid doesn't really address perhaps, but it takes you away from away from discussing what the conflict may be or what's behind the conflict. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay to say? Yes, yes. And also I am, I'm working on bringing more, I don't want to sound too much like Pollyanna, but I'm not afraid to show my Pollyanna face that I want to bring more heart instead of brain to the conversation. Because I feel sometimes brain messes up the dialogue. Because if you are only walking with the knowledge, that really shuts down the fact that there will be different knowledge and you are not super strong only with knowing you need love to more understand people yeah you um you want to bring um heart into into uh, your discussion into the into the empathy process and uh, because you believe that um the heart is uh, very important as it does, as it can't just be the brain. Perhaps the brain is, uh, you know, isn't uh, doesn't provide enough um, open space, maybe to uh, to to um, to take what someone has to say. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And I have a feeling I feel comfortable with the word empathy instead of love to make things more like uh, close to brain because when it's hard it's too much involved with love and that fantasy of the word love but empathy is more sounds to me like a real close to love word that we can at least uh, meet in the middle of heart and brain. <laughs> so em empathy for you is, um, empathy for you is, is provide, it's, it, it, it's not love. Um, it's, it's, love can be uh, blind, I guess. So empathy could put, is, more um more keeps you on track it's it's the, the it's between the heart and the brain a little bit more on the brain to op to so that you are um open more so to what what you're hearing would that would that make sense yes well i at first the, the only thing i wouldn't call um, empathy not love but a form and more easy way to meet between love and empathy. Thank you. I feel fully heard. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I'm going to pass on my uh, on my turn right now. Um, you know what I'll you can do if you want to pass. Just select someone. Say, "Hey, I'd like to pass." They'll reflect that, and then just say, "I feel fully heard," and that will sort of pass on the turn. Turn. Uh, I'll. Um, I'll pass on that and I'll give it to you, Edwin. Okay, so I'm right. hearing you're wanting to pass your turn and you feel heard. Yes. Is there more? I'm not very good at this and I, I mm. wanna listen. I wanna try and I wanna practice actually answering. Um, so I can, um, you know, I'm following along and I wanna be better at being able to paraphrase and to reflect. And I and I'm challenged a bit because I my I my mind races a little bit too much at this point. So I would like to I'm pumping the brakes right now and okay. passing on. Uh -huh. So you're feeling uh, you're sort of judging yourself as not being good at this, and you'd like to get better at doing the paraphrasing and the reflect reflection. And then you're also noticing that your mind is racing in a lot of different ways, and that's why you'd like to just sort of observe for a while. 
Thank you. Now I'm heard. Okay, good. <laughs> then uh, I'll speak to Andrea. Yes. <coughs> oh. here. Um, yeah, so let me think. Uh, for, for me, in terms of uh, dealing with conflict in, in XR, what I would like to see is uh, the empathy circle be sort of a foundational practice within XR that it would be that, you know, the meetings would start with empathic listening so that people just get familiar with the process and it sort of gets sort of embedded into the whole sort of mindset and way mm -hmm. of being. So what I hear you say is when you think about conflict in XR, um, your, your thoughts are that you would like to see empathic listening as a central, just a very central practice in groups yeah, to and start it, meetings mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And build from there, that it's sort of this initial gateway is both James and Sinead uh, mm -hmm. mentioned that it's, mm -hmm. it's an easy first step and there's a lot of other tools, you know, that can be added later, restorative circles, etc. But, you know, we need something really simple. So mm -hmm. I sort of have this, you know, desire, vision that we could just really spread the empathy circles just widely through XR that, uh, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, how to do that is kind mm -hmm. of my question. So what you would like to see happen is um, to see empathic listening, empathy circles implemented as a very easy access point um, or access gate all over XR and mm -hmm. then take it from there. Yeah, and I just wonder, like what James was saying, that there's people who just don't want to do the active listening. I've had the same thing here in XR San Francisco. I mean, there's real resistance to it. You know, it's just that, uh, like, no, we don't want to do this. You know, almost like suspicion about it. There's something, it shifts something, and it's like, uh, you know, people say, oh, let's just talk normally. But when they talk normally, it's like the same situation. There's certain people that dominate you know, people who are more quiet. So there's all, you know, there, there's a structure there too. So normal talk has a structure to it too. And it usually means the more verbal, more aggressive sort of dominate. Mm -hmm. So you resonate with what James also observed that um, there is, there can be quite a, quite a fierce resistance to, towards um, the idea of slowing conversations down with reflections and empathic listening nearly as if there was a distrust or yeah. suspicion around having a familiar structure of power over that just, mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't yeah, use those yeah, words there's but, a lot of power over yeah and yeah, yeah or but, we've got to work we've got to we've got uh -huh. to push we've got to do actions you know and kind of pushing yeah, to have stuff that taken away from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's uh all right my time stopped so um yeah so it's kind of thinking how to really spread it widely and one strategy is to do these empathy cafes so people get familiar with it and hopefully spread the practice and the other was to try to get the people in you know the co-founders and the spokespeople to do empathy circles so we just did one with uh rupert and Sh uh, reed yeah. and shakina and I think that will help to sort of give it legitimacy. If we can mm -hmm. get the, you know, the co-founders to be doing empathy circles, and they were very supportive of it. So if we can get them to do it, it might trickle down and say, oh, this is okay. You know, so just trying to think of strategies of how do we just have this practice be a sort of a gateway first practice throughout the, you know, the movement. Mm -hmm. So I hear you, you're really, you're really engaged in thinking about how we can get this method that really seems to work, you know, and on different layers uh, into the movement. And I can hear your excitement and I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can reflect. <laughs> yeah, the, no, the, the excitement also around the, the, the conversation with the founders and I listen to it. So I, I, I think I get the, the excitement. Yeah. Um, around they might be really as you know as they seem to have taken away a lot from it mm -hmm. end up promoting in you know, all this 
this um, and modeling that that practice and so we might have a trickle down mm -hmm. yeah that's it yeah i feel fully here oh i guess one last thing is just want to support kevin this is just a practice you know don't need to worry we're all here to support you and you know to begin with it can be a little anxiety producing <clears throat> yeah. uh, but just in time you get really you get familiar with the practice so maybe just reflect that last part and i'll feel heard yeah um and you before you stop you you again would like to address kevin with some encouragement around we're all learning how to do this and we would really like to hear your voice <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I feel fully heard. Thanks. So I guess it's my turn, and um, I think I would. I would. We don't need. To, we can't choose freely. It's your choice, whoever <laughs> okay. you want. There's no yeah. order. You know, it's nice yeah, to yeah, okay. kind of spread it around, but yeah. there's no I, order. I, I would to like you. to. I would like you, Eva, to to listen. <clears throat> I'll be happy to. <clears throat> Great. Yeah, so I was just now I was I was uh, kind of surprised because I was um, I, had, I had sweaty hands and I was I was, you know, a little anxious around um, listening and reflecting. Maybe that, you know, maybe I'm saying that to you too, Kevin. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just noticing that that there is always some vulnerability around this and it's something I actually took away from the, the conversation with Skeena and uh, and uh, what's his name? Rupert. Rupert, exactly, yeah, today. So maybe you can reflect that. Mm -hmm. Andrea, I hear you are surprised, even anxious to witness that uh, there is even a vulnerability on uh, empathic understanding or maybe reflecting, will I say? Yeah, I think I was actually referring to my own experience of having sweaty hands and, <laughs> and being anxious around reflecting, you know, doing this right or something. So just yeah. reflecting the vulnerability that that's always part of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I hear you again, uh, having sweaty hands and kind of like uh, almost anxiety or maybe, will I say, discomfort on reflecting what people are saying. Yeah. And I share yeah. that too. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I find myself really intrigued around the the these ideas of empathy circles and uh, i've only been in, in touch with this for not such a long while but you know familiar with other ways of authentic communication and and stuff but i i just i'm fascinated with how it can happen on so many different layers like this uh, the um, empathy circles yeah maybe i'll so yeah i hear andrea that you are already familiar with authentic communication and at the same time with your recent experiences with empathy circles you feel in treat of empathic understanding in different levels <clears throat> Yeah, I think there is what, what you called, um, we, we go for love, but we kind of start with empathy. And then there's, there was a thread around, cog I, I experienced this, um, often when we start off, it's cognitive empathy. It's uh, somewhat distant empathy, but we, it's our, like, it's for us to take it deeper. And, and it can be a process of sinking through layers. Mm -hmm. So I think each person can actually go for that, go for that step of deepening the conversation. And I like that because, you know, I like that, seeing that in different circles. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you heard my 
seeking or going for love in my uh, part of sharing, and you see this empathy circle experience as like a cognitive empathy where uh, empathy or understanding happens with in layers. So there is this fact of steps of deepening the understanding and uh, empathy. Hmm. So I think you are uh, observing or maybe defining that there will be layers on empathy, like a, and you called it with the name, cognitive empathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'm quite confident that it can sink through to, to deeper levels, which I personally think we really need. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been involved with conflict resolution and uh, DNA groups and XR and these ideas around restorative circles. And I totally share Sinead's um, wariness around, I wouldn't trust everyone with that. Like, you know, I think peer-based practices are safer than going sometimes then going with a facilitation that is not grounded enough mm -hmm. and um and i often think that the facilitators i have seen in xr germany who go to conflicts they don't get support for themselves or a space where they can deepen their their capacity of holding so yeah maybe that as a for now as a last thought around what i yeah what i've experienced yeah andrea i hear you saying uh you already have you have many experiences on sharing ideas under different tape uh, under different titles and uh about empathy circles you are confident that it will sink in However, you still have a you still have an idea or maybe even a concern, I would say, that empathy circle facilitator might not be too grounded or maybe not grounded enough for that mm -hmm. sinking experience. Oh sorry, I'll just I, I think I'll have to make that clear there. I was talking about restorative circles and where facilitators actually go into okay. conflicts and, and do a, a lot more active, mm -hmm. um, you know, like bring much more active practices to, to a conflict than is happening here. This is what I would call a peer-based practice. But I'm sorry, I'm, I probably didn't make that too clear. And thank you very much, I feel heard. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, I, I just, I think which a very important part came uh, in the end. So you felt in Germany, uh, some facilitators were not able to have enough support or enough space for themselves. I think that was a remarkable uh, definition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Sinead, would you uh, click? Can you hear us? Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> With all the experiences of empathy and uh, Andrea mentioning the term cognitive empathy, it really uh makes me wonder maybe we should first start on defining on what empathy is for me in my personal understanding so you're wondering if it would make sense to i suppose agree or have clarity on the definition of empathy mm -hmm. as a group you mean well both as a group, 
as a group and as uh, as a personal level and as a group. And I'm wondering if it would help to hear in the beginning of an empathy circle like this, maybe in my words, that we are not supposed to continue the conversation with our ideas. We're only supposed to be here to hear what other person is saying and reflecting that. Mm. So are you suggesting that um, when you come to an empathy circle that you're only supposed to be here just to hear other people but not really express your own views? Uh, almost, but it, it felt a little weird to hear it back now, <laughs> but maybe I should give it as an example. When a child hurts himself, a five-year-old hurts himself, what he needs is to hear that it's okay. He does, and that I share your pain or share your discomfort. That child doesn't need to hear why he's hurt or why that accident happened. Mm. Just definition of that action of hurting will comfort that person. So he doesn't need my explanations. Mm. He just needs my understanding of I, I hear, I see that you are hurt. So to take the example of a child, I guess what I'm hearing is that you find it so important to validate his experience and he doesn't need to understand why he's hurt. He just needs to know that you understand that he is hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I call that a good step for any kind of communication, especially with conflict. That I hear you and uh, I take you, I take your opinion as valuable and I don't have to mention if I agree or disagree with it, but we're at the level, Andrea, I like that, where I want to be at the level of really witnessing what you are saying now. And that's it. Stop the conversation there for a level. So I guess I'm hearing it that when there is conflict, you think it's really important for a person to be able to just hear where the other person is coming from and um, have respect for them. Whether you disagree with it or agree with it, it's almost it's not necessarily relevant in that moment. You just need to be with them witnessing what is going on for that person and to value what what their perspective is yeah exactly and on the other hand with again the level of empathy or love for myself and my being i know where i am i don't have to prove what i think about the situation unless that person asks me to but I have, a, I have a theory that if you listen to people without explanation comments, there will be a time that they will ask you, what do you think with a listening, empathic way? Mm. Do you believe that if you, I suppose, give enough empathy um, or give enough space to another person, wherever they're coming from, that eventually you, you trust that they will eventually have space to hear your, your perspective, or at least yes. they may. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that was the time too. Okay. Thank you. I feel fully hurt. Schnell. Okay. Thanks. Um, Edwin, could I speak with you? Yep, listening. 
I'm choosing you partly because there's some things that I wanted to share around my thoughts and empathy circles and I suppose that are relevant to how you bring empathy circles, <clears throat> how I, how, what, what you're actually bringing, what I've seen you kind of drive, I suppose, in, in XOR. So you want to speak to me because of uh, what you have observed of how I'm bringing empathy circles into XR. Is there something yeah. relevant to that that you want to share? Yeah. Um, and then I really appreciate uh, what what you're bringing and the, I suppose, the, I see maybe an energy or a, you know, real strong strength in a, in a in a positive way you know empathy is something that I really believe in and I would have had different experiences of it over the years maybe the last 10 years or so through NBC so um, I appreciate um, the, the steadfastness with which you're holding this word empathy and, and empathy circle in particular Mm -hmm. And there's sort of a, maybe a steadfastness or a consistency, maybe even there's that the way I've kind of held this and there's so you're sort of appreciating that. Mm -hmm. And I suppose uh, there's something that I, I have been thinking about that I noticed that maybe I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but something that I hear, I don't know if, if this is how it is, but there's something slight concern that I have, something that comes up for me quite a bit actually, but I've never really shared it. And that's um, about the, uh, <clears throat> I like when there's choice. I feel like choice is just this really important part of life. And um, uh, for the, it's, it's something that I, I, I think is, is, isn't always there in, in ways that we don't always see. And I suppose in the empathy circle thing, there's a few little things like one would be, um, you know, I, this, this, when, when people have to say, I feel heard, they, they might not necessarily feel heard at the end of it. Sometimes even like you might have a lot more that you want to say, but you also are willing to respect the boundaries of having, you know, four or five minutes. You mightn't feel fully heard, but I don't, I think I feel a little uncomfortable that, you know, I then have, you know, I'm asked a couple of times maybe to say I feel heard or it, it's expected of me or I just don't really like that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so for you, choice is really uh, important. And one thing is in terms of, uh, you know, you're getting a reflection and then you're, you feel like you're forced to say, I feel fully heard, and you don't really feel fully heard, so maybe you're not feeling a sort of integrity with what you're saying, because you, you like mm -hmm. to say, maybe like, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I'm, there's, is that sort of it? Yeah, and, and kind of there's like a sense of that I'd like that to feel okay by everyone and know that I'm not breaking the rules of the group by not saying I feel fully heard you know that you know you don't have to feel fully heard at the end of your five minutes but you're definitely you know most people want to agree to that you know five minutes boundary whatever boundary we have agreed at the start of the conversation um and there's there's another thing as well so maybe to reflect that bit and then i'll go to the other bit i'm not sure if i quite got that but uh there's maybe you could say that again it's i didn't it was a little kind of breaking up for me that wasn't quite yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was just reiterating really uh, just that at the end of the five minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know what I said. <laughs> yeah, you're not even sure I'm... what you said, but you think you're reiterating. If you were reiterating, you're saying, yeah, you don't, there's something about saying you feel fully heard that just doesn't feel right uh, with you. And there's something you like to kind of address within that and have some kind of choice in there. Yeah, I don't like having to say that to mean mm. that I want to pass oh, it. Uh -huh. That's part of my thing that I could just, yeah, I've agreed to five minutes and that's it. I'm, because I might not feel fully heard and I don't like that I have to say I feel fully heard before I can pass on or that I'm asked to say that, you know, or in a way that other people are asked to. I feel a little uncomfortable with it because we don't really know 
if they feel fully heard or not, you know, right. but you might want to pass it over. So it's just a, a tiny little thing, but something about the choice of it is really important to me. And that's also what the other point is about, which probably is a slightly bigger one. Yeah, that's the time too. But uh, yeah, so it's really that, that essence, that's so you have a couple of different topics and that's one. And it's just really having choice about that and kind of feeling like you're forced to say you feel fully heard and it doesn't feel kind of really right and would like more choice in there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> now we're at the point. Now you're feeling a little awkward because you don't want to say you're fully hurt, <laughs> but you want to pass it on. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I'll speak to James. Uh, yeah, you're muted. So. I'm good. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. So actually, it's kind of interesting because I hear different things people are saying. And a lot of this stuff is actually covered in the video description. Like there's a 25-minute description of how to do an empathy circle. And in the empathy circle, it says you can, to pass on your turn, you can say something like, I feel fully heard or just something to indicate. So it's in the documentation, you know, sort of. And then, but people don't really resonate because you don't have to say, I feel fully heard. You say, okay, I'm done or okay or whatever. So there, you don't have, there's no rule that says you have to say I'm fully heard. So I guess I want to address that. There are guidelines in the documentation that say things like, say you're fully heard or indicate somehow that you're done by saying, okay. Um, but you want people to understand that it's it's not a requirement to say those phrases exactly yeah because you don't necessarily feel fully heard it's like well i feel you know 25 percent heard or you know i feel heard enough or you know it's <laughs> there's you know it, it's kind of how to be accurate you know so that, that i guess just want to address that you don't have to it's not like some kind of a rule it was never said as a rule it's just kind of a convenience or something uh, so those are conveniences or conventions for people to indicate that they're done, but there's ways to express what people are actually feeling when they're done. Yeah. And uh, also in terms of, oh, maybe we should define empathy up front. It's great to do that. But again, in that 25-minute uh, video, it does go into the definition of, of empathy, like how, we're, how I'm using it, at least in the empathy circle in the sense of you're on some going on someone's journey with them. So you can go on somebody's journey silently or you can do it, you know, with words, you know, with, you know, with the reflection kind of helps to kind of make sure you're on the journey with them. So the definition is uh, sort of addressed in there as well. The definition that you use for empathy mm -hmm. is explained in the documentation for these calls and it goes into the different ways in which you can empathize silently or otherwise. Yeah. And I guess what I'm, the, the one point is, is we can't put everything into the empathy circle itself because then we're going to have people like you being frustrated because there's all this explanation. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Oh God, we're going to have 20 minutes of explanation of all these things. And then the people who know it already are going to be bored. So I kind of, you know, like to just let's jump into it as quickly as possible and kind of just learn by doing. But then you have people who are like, oh, I don't like this part, or I don't like that, or maybe we should add this part. So it, it's a kind of a juggling act here to, you know, kind of make it efficient. And, you know, we need to keep improving. And, you know, so it's, it's good to bring all those topics up. Um, you are amused because you recognize that you can't please everyone and that there are different kinds of people like me who get bored with uh, the old stuff. And then there are people who come in and want, um, things like definitions for empathy. And so you do your best to uh, cover some bases, but um, anyway, you, you hack it, it's gonna, people are gonna be, want something different. And so you're working out different uh, little ways to improve the system that you've got. Yeah, so if you kind of see the documentation, the video and stuff, it kind of answers a lot of the questions if you can, if you kind of remember, remember that. The other thing is how to go, I like that term about the onion, that sort of, or you know, how do we go into deeper layers? And I think a deeper layer 
is if we identify our felt experience. I had actually thought of maybe one of the exercises would be um, like before you, when you start speaking, you say, how do you feel? So like, I feel very bemused. <laughs> I feel, I feel, I don't know if that's a feeling, but it's, I feel just very humorous about just the, you know, the difficulty of doing all this. So, you know, to share a felt experience and get a reflection on your felt experience and that kind of helps things go deeper too. So you recommend that people watch the videos, read the documentation. You like the metaphor of the onion and that there are different layers of depth which we can reach. And you like the, um, you like the suggestion of starting with the felt experience, a, a feeling in the present that then is um, the focal point for someone to reflect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the and the other thing is is I, the empathy circle. I try to make it really simple so people can just start wherever they are. But there's a lot of practices for going deeper. You know, how do we really go deeper? So, uh, yeah, I just add that, and then that's my time. Empathy circles. It's a way to start, and then there's lots of ways to go deeper. Yeah, I feel fully heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Kevin, would you like to? Listen to me? Yes, I would, James. Thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, a totally, totally supportive of uh, what um, uh, Sinead was saying about um, discomfort around uh, having to say certain things in certain ways and um, really accessing our choice. Um, I think one of the great learnings for me in doing this work is taking the choice, recognizing the focal point of choice as being here in me and not out there somewhere. So it's true that people will often want things from me. They'll, you know, they want me to speak in certain ways, use certain phrases. Um, I get asked to speak. I get asked to 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 modify my the way that I speak all the time and um, it's the one thing I push back on the hardest uh, I, I like to retain my creative choices and freedoms about the way that I speak and I find um, you know that there's um, it's not it's not it's not a superficial thing it's it's deeply connected to you know that need for self connection and autonomy so James, I hear you say that um, you agree with Sinead in that um, you don't like the um, you like to have more choice you like the you don't necessarily uh, like the rigidity of 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 you want to be able to express yourself and not uh, you know you, you don't understand the guidelines but you want to be able to um have the free will to say uh, say as you will and and as you like to communicate yes um i also like to experiment with different kinds of empathy circles for example i do an empathy circle that i would call like extreme empathy where we share things that are vulgar you know obscene things that uh, you wouldn't encounter in a, a beginner's empathy circle. And uh, I also try to gauge the audience. You know, I don't bring that kind of intensity into a group of people that I don't know, uh, that I, you know, um, not because I can't, not because it would be breaking the rules, but because I want to support the container and to some extent where people are at and what people are expecting um, and I think it is possible to, um, how to say this, be too different that whatever empathy system, I like to think of in systems, you know, whatever system you're working in, um, you're too different for, from that system and it closes to you. And I, I try to um, not have that happen. 
So James, I hear you say that you, um, you have a lot of experience in this actually, in that you look at these, uh, at empathy as being different systems and you, you practice and have practiced extreme empathy where you know, everyone within the group is able to uh, say whatever they want, regardless of what it is. And, but then you recognize that you yourself um, adapt, potentially adapt yourself and your message and what you have to say um, to what the audience might be within the particular empathy circle that you're participating at the time. Yes. Um, and there's also something called the authority issue where people don't like to be told what to do. Nobody likes to be told what to do. And, um, you know, I, I know empath I, I know Edwin now for a couple of years and um, sometimes in empathy circles, I like to attack him as the authority figure. Um, sometimes because I'm actually, I actually have a disagreement and sometimes because I just want to demonstrate for people that it's okay to disagree. It's not, uh, it doesn't go against empathy to disagree or um, to attack. I mean, that's what happens when we have conflict and we, it's, it's useful to know um, how to do it, how to deal with it, how to respond when, when that happens. I hear you say that, um, James, that you have a bit of a uh, problem with authority uh, a bit. And that, Thank, um, no, no, that's not what I said. Um, I said that there is something called the authority issue where um, everyone does not like to be told what to do. It's not just my personal issue with authority. I, I hear you say that um, it's it's not your personal issue with authority, but in one form or another, everyone has uh, has the same uh, same thing about authority. It may be potentially at different different degrees, however, um, or how it may impact each person at that time. But there is that is something that's universal. Yes, thank you, Kevin. I'm done. Thanks for that, James. Uh, so I'm going to ask for um, Andrea, if you'd like to listen. Um, sure. I wanted to talk just, brief, just briefly about the, um, the subject title again. Um, how might XR be more effective? effectively me, uh, mediate and resolve conflict. So I wonder what I've recognized in uh, my discussion group so far, which is only just a few, and I really, really appreciate this. But what I've noticed in the few that I've been at is that there doesn't seem to be a lot of diversity in, in where, we are, uh, what, where we have people either not necessarily where they're from, but more diverse backgrounds so that we can kind of get more perspective and kind of broaden, broaden the, the uh, talking about how to resolve conflict when you may have, with more diversity, you may have other people, um, you know, being able to address uh, certain um, real time uh, problems that they have recognized in terms of how they're having conflict within their particular group if they are um you know i think that that's uh i think that that's one thing that that comes to my mind and because uh, oh yes can i try because i'm i'm not sure if i'm getting this right so so what i hear you is you're coming back in your mind to the the original title of this of this gathering and you're thinking to your own discussion groups. I'm, I'm not sure, you said discussion groups. I'm, I'm not sure if that includes empathy at all. And what I heard you say was that there's not necessarily a lot of diversity in those groups. Not necessary. is that, would that be right? Okay. Yes. And in uh, which, which entails maybe that there isn't a lot of conflict to be worked on 
Yeah, that's what I've been he hearing you say so far, I think. Yeah, and I, I think what I'm really, what I'm trying to say is that with not just within the, my group, uh, my street group, but within the Empathy Cafe, the, the, this process with Edwin and, and everyone, I, I haven't seen myself in any of the discussions that I've been in. I haven't seen a lot of diversity. Um, okay. Where uh, we were to try and, um, you know, try and get more and more people. I, I invite as many people as I can, quite a few actually. And then, you know, if there's a way that we could build more diversity within the people that are attending these online um, elements, I think that would be, that's what, kind of one of my goals, almost, uh, you know, from where Edwin, I, I totally agree with, uh, you know, how great it is to have some of the founders that are looking at, at the empathy circle process. I think that's beautiful. And I'm, I'm really, really excited for that as well. However, I I'm, would be equally excited to see, you know, indigenous, um, you know, some indigenous people that were, would participate. And, and so we can actually broaden the discussion of, of conflict, of what's happening mm -hmm. real in, mm -hmm. that, in, in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So now I hear that you're, you're broadening your perspective on actually what is happening here with the empathy circles and that so far you haven't seen a lot of adversity within the, the groups that you've participated in and nearly, uh, yeah, it feels like it would actually be enriching to have a broader diversity of people. So one could actually engage in different viewpoints, different background and, and, and with uh, whatever differences might come up there in real life and with the empathy method. So that's what I'm hearing you say. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. I think after that, if, if we were to be able to have more people of color um, participating in these online uh, online uh, discussions, it would I would expect it to to kind of proliferate itself, and and, mm -hmm. and we'd find more and more um, of of people accepting the empathy cafe process, and and really build in trying to get um, you know they would go back to their communities and and hopefully drive uh, drive that mm -hmm. throughout, so we really see this process continue to, to grow quickly. Mm -hmm. So now I hear you say that you would especially um, be happy to see indigenous and people and people of color included in this process and maybe then have a different experience with the kind of exchange that they have here and take it to their own communities. Yeah. Yes, that's Would great, that be Andrea. Close. Okay, thank you. Um, would you listen to me, Sinead? <clears throat> A lot came up for me <laughs> while I was listening to you and when I was listening to Edwin's response. And um, as that was happening, I, I noticed that something I actually, I, I, I actually prefer this group to be even smaller or to have more flexible rules around conversing or both, whatever. Um, because sometimes, yeah, it, it just felt like there was a response. There was a, there was a wanting to, to come in there for some reason. So that, that's just, um, yeah, thinking about how this format is done. And I'll start off with that, so maybe we can. Sorry, yeah, so you're, you're noticing maybe reaction in yourself um, when I was talking, or Edwin and uh, just there when you were listening maybe, um, and then you're noticing that, um, yeah, there are certain, I don't know something about the flexibility of the group and and that maybe you would is it that you would like there to be you know other opportunities or just imagining that there could be other ways of of um in, i don't say interjecting or or you know just a different format you're just noticing the format 
and some reaction to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what um, I, I have, for me, for myself, I have coined the, the term micro conflicts and that, that's my, you know, a way I've been looking at it also in our local group, because um, I think a lot of conflict is, is avoided and um, it keeps groups very homogeneous or, you know, whatever, but that is a different thing. But when I listened to you, Sinead, I didn't feel it was a, I, I, I really, I really felt like I've, I, I don't know if that was accurate, but I felt something resonate in me around the, around the um, sticking to the rules, raising our voice, that kind of thing. And I didn't feel it was about not having absorbed the rules properly. And, and by the way, I, 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 I think I heard something that like the last thing, the last recommendation is actually to say I'm, I, I feel fully heard. I found that, I found that um, um, confusing when I listened to the video, but, but anyway, I'll, ch I'll check that again. But there is something deeper for me. I would, and I, I happened to look, and I don't know if that is okay to say, but I happened to look at the last recording where you were part of the, the conversation she made. And I felt so strongly that you were not heard, you know, you were not heard in that situation, which is nobody's fault in that moment. But it's, it's a matter of fact. And, um, and I also felt very strongly, like, cross kind of searching those different circles, that the, the topic of female, male dynamics and, and gender did come up it came up in in several circles and um i was i did feel a little unhappy about how um one could address it one could address that maybe it, it's different for a woman to say i'm not abiding by these rules and we're not abiding you know <laughs> i mean we're talking to it than it is to a man and and just listen to that experience completely and i think that would be my desire at this point in time, I think it's a timely, it's a timely thing that I would like to see happen. So that was too much, I realized, but I'll mm. let you reflect. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot there. And, I, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to get all this right. Um, yeah, so I'm hearing this reaction and something, something seems to have touched you about what I said between this call and the previous call. And, you know, that you, you noticed that you had a, a sense that I wasn't heard. And um, that, that I don't know <clears throat> if I have the right feeling for how you felt about that. Um, but something, something moving anyway, in, in some way, some, some emotion is, is alive for you, is, is triggered by, by that and what happened. And also you brought up about that <clears throat> male-female thing and that, you know, that I am female and, and I guess, you know, Edwin, I guess we were talking about Edwin, but not, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm weary of saying this, but I think we're not, uh, <laughs> I think we're saying that there's something there that, that could be explored. Um, and I said, we, I, I think that's what you're saying. I think you're saying that there's something that could be explored there. Um, is that it? Is there something yeah, for, for now, I feel fully heard. Thank you. It was my time too. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Edwin, I'm going to go again. <laughs> okay, you want to listen to me again? You're feeling a little humor about it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I guess, um, you know, it is that I, I keep trying to say the thing and I keep not getting to it, so I'm going to go straight to it. Um, there's something about choice that is really important for me. And I'm hearing it in a few different ways, although there's not clarity on it, I'm hearing in a few different ways this uh, possibility of, I know it's not meant like this, but it almost sounds like imposing, imposing is a strong word, empathy, or, or an em a process on people um, for empathy. Um, for example, um, direct actions but it's, it's there's no there's not that people are trying to impose empathy on on anyone but more of what what is it that i want to say more that i would 
not like it if we were and that that would be for me really important that there was always an invitation and that that's what's really special to me about the empathy space is is that it's there and it's great that it's there and I might not always attend but there's an invitation and a choice and that's what matters rather than that I have to do it and I'd be because uh, can I just keep going for a tiny second more sure just, as much as you um, want yeah it's just that that for me it is there is a patriarchal nature a completely unintended one and it's not a personal thing to you but there's something more deep going on that I feel I, I started to talk about it the last time you know there is a history there of, of, of white men. And again, this is really not personal to you. This is something deeper than that. But there is a history of white men imposing what they think is best on the rest of the world. And I don't want that to happen in empty circles. Mm -hmm. So there, it's really important to you about this quality of choice and sort of an invitation that people can join into something if they feel like it, that it's sort of an option uh, and not that it's sort of imposed that you have to you have to do it. Then you're sort of a, a tying in this have to do something with maybe with men, you know, imposing something, and and you're kind of like struggling with it though. You don't feel like you're, maybe you're quite named it the way you want to, but there's something there about the sort of a domination, you know, white male or something issue. There is. There is a domination white male issue that has affected, you know, has, has brought the world pretty much to the way it is right now. It is, it is, I would say, mostly because of a domination white male issue that, you know, or not just not just the men's fault, but it is it is that is the leading aspect of, you know, the killing off of numerous indigenous cultures around the world and the importation of, you know, foods that we don't need and capitalism and it's it's just like this microcosm of empathy circle, safe space that is a beautiful opportunity for people to learn about each other and to listen to each other um, that I would somehow like to, I, I'd hate to think of that imposed on anyone, whether I think it's the right thing or not, I would just hate to think of anyone having to follow that or to expect it that if they wanted to be abiding by group rules or even social kind of norms that they have to do empathy circles. Mm -hmm. So there's this, uh, this sort of domination issue, you know, that you feel that that's sort of maybe part of society and that there's this space that's sort of a, an empathic space that's really a choice and there's like sort of a different energy there. And you'd really, it would be, sounds like maybe even painful to think that that empathic space would have that quality of domination in it that you have to, you have to do this and you have to em do an empathy circle and it would sort of ruin the choice uh, aspect of it and the quality of it. Yeah, thanks Edwin, yeah, thank you, I still fully heard. Okay, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll speak to Ava. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's interesting. This whole white male kind of thing is, uh, I kind of have an issue with that because for me, there's sort of empathic space and it's not really gender, you know, specific. Uh, maybe I'll just start with that. Uh, you, I hear you saying you have an issue with the white male figure and uh, you want to take it as like not a gender issue. But yeah, exactly. And gender issue. Yeah, because if, if for me, it's like how we're, we're looking and I appreciate what Shanette is saying. It's like we create this empathic space, this empathic uh, quality between us where we're hearing each other, we're sensing into each other. And we want to de develop that sort of way of relating. And I would say that women have almost as many ways as men, maybe the same amount, of blocking that energy as men do. So 
I mean, I can go down, down a whole list in my own family of different ways that the females and you know, my family kind of block empathic energy. And um, you, you are proud and you are, uh, you're into this empathic sharing. You see that there is this empathic sharing happening but you're also aware and you wanted to mention that not only white men, but some females referring to your family, uh, let's go with that, have a way to really, I would say, maybe block that empathy or carry that empathy to a way that they want it. So again, I hear you like, uh, both men and women have their own ways to yeah. block and, and, and different groups. So I don't romanticize indigenous cultures. I don't romanticize, you know, people of color. Um, and uh, so, or, or women or whatever. It's, I think that we all as human beings, I kind of have these ways of blocking empathy. So, mm -hmm. and that's what we need to just see is that common humanity and just realize, you know, I have my ways of blocking it. You have your ways and let's have sort of the intention of creating a, a deeper, you know, mm -hmm. positive, you know, empathic, mm -hmm. you know, empathic connection. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go with uh, not romanticizing uh, different ethnical background or cultural groups in a diverse version, but where you want to go or, or where you want to see empathy groups is where empathy is shared and people are uh, able and they, they have the ability and they are capable of blocking the empathy as they are they can be parts of different groups yeah uh, and they all have the, their way to block empathy if they want to yeah and for example you know some people are self-righteous like oh i have the answer i know what's right and that kind of blocks you know the dialogue uh mm -hmm. there's people who do withdrawal i have a family member if a conflict starts it's withdrawal and that withdrawal sort of blocks empathy another person gets really angry and tries to you know it just kind of intimidates everyone and another family you don't have to repeat all these but a family another family member female family members talks and talks and talks and never gives a space for anyone else to to uh, be heard so mm -hmm. you know these kind of these are all blocks and then maybe the males are more dominating they have a different way of blocking empathy so i guess i just want to sort of humanize these these blocks mm -hmm. Edwin, I hear you saying like, yeah, you will find, you find people, uh, they're blocking empathy in their own way, in their own abilities. And again, mm -hmm. uh, reflecting to your family examples, uh, people block empathy in their own abilities. Yeah. Some, yeah. Uh, some block it with withdrawing, some uh, well, some male, obviously, maybe because some male are blocking the empathy with too much out loud talking. Mm -hmm. Maybe it might be because it's more visible and verbal. That's why we witnessed that too. But I hear you saying people from different various genders or different backgrounds, we all have our way of blocking empathy. Yep, I feel heard. I had a lot more to say, but my time is up <laughs> and okay. I feel heard. There's a lot more to say, but uh, you feel heard. Yeah, and, uh, that's it. Thank you. Are we up with our time yet? Oh, I think now we can go another, about okay. another round or two, I think. Let's see. Okay. 11.30 I have here. Okay. Go ahead. So it was impressive to uh, witness that conversation of, am I re really fully heard? And Eva, who are you yeah. talking to? Who are you asking to reflect you? Uh, that's a very good question. Would you reflect, James? Uh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was interesting experience to really hear, especially from you, James. So thank you for stepping up that 
am I really supposed to be hurt? And that really gave me a safe space that maybe I am not really supposed to be hurt. Maybe that's what my way of adding to the empathy circle. Um, not sure I got this, but you're, so you, you, you were engaged, particularly listening to me with this question of, are you supposed to be heard? Meaning, uh, are you being heard or is it okay that you're not being heard? Yeah, second part. Uh, I'm wondering if it should be okay not to be heard, but still continue the empathy conversation. Okay, so you're wondering maybe when you're engaged in empathic conversation that it's okay. Somebody doesn't necessarily understand or hear you, but it's okay to continue. Mm -hmm. And again, what with the reflections, if when a person is reflecting my ideas, uh, maybe 20% of my idea was reflected by that person. And in the sake of a good high quality dialogue, I want to see it as like, maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe that person, I needed to hear how I am seen by that person. There's a reason that, I think I want to believe like, there's a reason that I was 20% heard, but not full. And I want to, I don't want to feel the pressure of expressing my myself 100%. You have to hear this. I want, I need you to really understand and reflect me back. I think that was a pressure and I don't want that. So you're noticing that in some interactions, um, the person listening to you is not necessarily hearing everything you say, but you want to find a way to, you, you're recognizing that that might be okay, that there's a reason for it, maybe a value in just um, not having to push yourself uh, to be completely understood. Exactly. And I want to have that freedom while I'm reflecting too, because maybe I am not reflecting as as much as my listener here. So I think I'm trying to protect myself and my listening abilities maybe. <laughs> you want the freedom to not understand everything people are saying. Thank you. No, I've, I'm proud to say I feel fully heard. <laughs> and it's okay people not to be fully, fully heard. It's okay if you're not fully heard. <laughs> But I appreciate, uh, especially Sinead's perspective. Uh, thank you, Sinead. And thank you, I'll pass it to you now, James. We yes. can do one more, uh, take five minutes, and James. Yeah, um, Andrea, would you hear? Um, thanks. Um, so, what I often, what I often experience in empathy circles every, everywhere that I go um, is that people like to test the container and um, push, push and see. And, and I'm, exp I'm, I'm sensing that today. Like I hear, um, uh, you know, ideas about uh, gender and um, race coming up that I know often uh, are accompanied with a lot of strong feelings. And even while I was taking notes, it's noticeable to me that when those topics come up, the speed of the speaker increases two or three fold. And I'm like typing like this. And, I, and, and, um, and additionally, I know that my, you know, uh, feelings are coming up for me. And um, so I'll pause there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're sharing your experience, I guess, in different groups um, that there is a phenomenon of what you call testing the container where people 
I guess, um, probe what responses to maybe more controversial topics arise. And also you, you um, observe uh, an acceleration of, of the speed of speaking and you heightened emotions especially as you try to track what people are saying. So I think yeah. that's what I've been getting so far. Yeah. I also want to, want to say that I think that that's totally a valuable and valid activity and that I am responsible for testing and breaking many containers. And I've learned a lot from doing that. Um, it is um, part it is part of the process, both to create the container and to use the container. And um, it's part of the process of not, you know, if, if the container that was created is not strong enough, we don't have to blame the people who created it, but we can find ways to create a stronger container. And if somebody winds up breaking a container, we don't have to blame them. We can, you know, find ways so that they um, bring things to the, the right container. So you're making clear that you think that is absolutely valuable and that is to be respected, that probing of a container, um, and it's not uh, a mistake, but it's actually what happens and it can, um, I'm not sure if I remember the wording right, it can, it can challenge it can break a container and maybe it can also fortify it. Yes. But I didn't hear you say that. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's okay. Um, so when I, when I, when I facilitate a container, mm. I often think of it as inviting people to break the container um, because that gives me ways of knowing what the capacity is and what, what people really want. And um you know, I, I heard that kind of echoed in some of the things you had said, uh, Andrea, about um, rules and wanting to uh, respond um, or finding maybe different ways to set up the, the empathy circle that allow for more freedom. And um, I have lots of ideas of that and um, even came to the circles today thinking, hmm, maybe I, let me talk about what's gonna happen if I start breaking Edwin's container, am I gonna get kicked out or is there gonna be a meeting or what, you know, uh, often justice systems and we're creating an alternative justice system, they have clear, you know, it's clearly um, laid out. We, well, if you do this, then this happens. If you do this, then this happens. And the lack of that, I think can, can it's certainly anxiety producing in me where I don't, what if I start interrupting someone? What if I did it for five minutes? You know, what, are there clear consequences or is it just um, a free for all? Yeah, so I don't know if I'm, okay, I'll try. Um, you're, you're after saying that actually when you facilitate groups yourself, you tend to go to the edges of, what what the container is um, is there to hold? No, and not that I go to the edges. No, no, I no, no. You encourage people to go yeah. there. You yeah. actually invite people to to create that container, to co-create that container by maybe even breaking it or or breaking the rules. So that's what I what I heard you say. Yeah, maybe a short version. Yes, yeah, so we're heading, you. heading back to the main room now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you see, thank I you. see the notice. Thanks. See you there. Um, about the idea of, um, well, giving, um, doing that approach that she recommended and, um, you know, giving um, people the floor. Okay, to Sally, say what they need to say. Sally, I just want to say we're back in the um, the the main group now. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Thanks for your, we just uh, what you missed is that there was a lot of appreciation uh, shown at the very end, which you were included in. So I want you to hear that. Okay. Okay. okay thank you.
All right, Edwin. Take okay, it. great. Yes, we're back all together. With, there's uh, eight, 10, 10, Russ, eight, nine, 10, 11. So um, I guess we're going to just do sort of a, a minute and a half, uh, kind of a re recount of summary of what your meeting was, maybe the high points of it about the topics and conflict. And we'll just go around and if Bill, if you'd again be willing to just call on people and keep the time, giving a whole minute and a half. Yeah. Uh, okay. It might go over a little bit for a time, but. Got it. Okay. okay. Great. Um, let's see. Looks like Marta left uh, for a bit. Oh, there she is. Marta? Uh, yep. Uh, feedback? Mm. Mm. We spoke of um, the, the if, no, it's particularly about men groups or men, but I think it applies more generally that beyond the pain, if it's fully expressed, there's vulnerability, surrender, and being fully present. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Bob. Uh, a powerful, experience with this great group of five folks um, and I was reminded of an eternal truth that my friend shared with me that well-being comes from pain and honesty and uh, I am so grateful for people accepting my honesty and my pain and my well-being and uh, again a tremendous blessing to be part of this thanks Thanks, Bob. Carolina? Uh, for me, it is um, the fact that the person who brings the conflict kind of objects, obstructs something, uh, is actually should be welcomed as a sensor of the issue that we need to deal with. It's like welcoming person to help understand the, the tension, the problem we have in community, in group, whatever it is. And this is one thing. So the, 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 the person, the objector is the sensor of the issue. And the second thing, well, maybe this is the, 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 the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and Eva. Thank you, Bill. So uh, today I was able to hear and witness different circles and different levels of empathy and how different groups of people, the fact of difference is defined in various ways. It could be gender, it could be uh, cultural background and all that, but as like the people of this like couple last centuries, we have some burdens on some circle groups. Uh, and uh, it was inspiring to talk about that because when you mention a like say group of women, or indigenous uh, group of people, it's more like we all have a background and we want to talk about our burdens in a way that might upset some other circles and that should be okay. And we don't need uh, some used to be powerful or still in power circles to support uh, us are, are uh, talking. So I know this was a lot because I'm processing in my heart some of the conversation in the group was so dear to me. So I appreciate that. And it was a good, nice relief to really talk like, okay, uh, I don't have to be fully heard. Uh, and 
I want to be okay with that. And I want my listener to be okay with the fact that maybe I won't, uh, I won't give a good reflection and he or she can always correct me or give his ideas saying like, well, I didn't mention that or I didn't want to mean that, but this is what I wanted to mean. I think that brings a good quality to the communication too. Okay, timing. Okay, sorry, okay. Thanks, Ava. Andrea. Um, where to start? I enjoyed the circle. I, um, I was very much at ease, even though, and I enjoyed the fact that in my, in my view, there was conflict coming up. There was actually a difference being expressed and I enjoy that. So, um, and I agree. Uh, I think that is a very liberating thing to say. No, I'm not fully heard this time. You know, it's this time around. It's I don't feel like I could bring that across. And at the same time, I do wish for containers where we're dedicated enough to come back and say, I really want to get, you know, I really want to get this. Maybe even from a deeper layer, from the inside out or from a, a deeper layer of um, heart understanding and yeah, those were all, those topics were kind of on our minds and hearts, I think, in that circle, and I enjoyed it. Great, thanks. Kevin? Yes. Um, our group, we, 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 we established that, um, that, potentially the you know the rigidity of of um the process um needs to needs to have potentially be challenged i think at, at times and um, um and i need a lot more practice a lot more practice that's it for me right now. Thanks to everybody. I can't wait to the next one. Great. Thanks, Kevin. James, your favorite part of the show here. <laughs> You're muted, James. There you go. Thank you. I was just moving from taking notes to here. Um, yes, um, our group um, did have some conflict coming up around um, familiar conflict topics like patriarchy and male and female issues and um, rules, rigidity of rules and um, those, you know, that's moving in a direction that I want to go in uh, deeper topics, um, more conflict coming to the surface and testing the container and um, playing with the container and also coming back uh, deepening our uh, practice and um, uh, connection to each other and to ourselves. Great. Thanks, James. Okay, Sally. I uh, had an absolutely wonderful time with um, within the group. Um, the idea that um, pain and um, struggle and moving ahead um, just really hit home for me. Failure and moving ahead, um, big thoughts and um, our experiences and growth in my life um, as with um, conflict, um, I would have to say that conflict is good. And if you can bring it to the surface and even, you know, like have like a, a little whiteboard where you write it down, um, 
even if you have to put it in the parking lot um it's uh you know and then come back to it when everyone's calm but um honestly i really enjoyed today's um group and um thank you okay great and Sinead? Yeah, hey, um, yeah, I really appreciate listening to everybody's perspective. Um, and <laughs> the people who are in the group might laugh, but I, I actually found it quite a diverse perspective in a way, which I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, I, I felt like we didn't quite, the, the longing is in me to get, to get more into those kind of conversations and I guess I maybe have to accept that they just happen slowly but I, I feel that you know I, I could have I'd love to have said more <laughs> um, maybe maybe I'll be back again so thanks very much for the space thank you yeah love to see you um, okay uh, it was very my experience was very you know we we're talking about very profound things uh, and we're talking about pain and working through that pain. And it seems that if we're going to work effectively, we're gonna to have to work through that pain and come to a point of emotional trust and then effective action. Um, and uh, I was really honored to be with people who are with me and struggling that, and I don't feel so alone. Thank you. Edwin. Oh, thanks, Bill. So uh, sort of my summary was I heard that uh, conflict is rife in Extinction Rebellion. Uh, there were some questions about how to promote the empathy circle in XR. Uh, it wanting it to, and also questions about the empathy circle process. A lot of <laughs> questions about the empathy circle itself. Uh, you know, not wanting it to be forced, but to be an in invitations. Uh, uh, issues about uh, like saying you feel heard at the end, fully heard when you're not really feeling fully heard. So kind of feeling a, a sense of disconnect there. Uh, and then questions of what does it really mean to be heard? Uh, questions about, well, how do we have a more diverse group? Uh, and uh, there was topics that, so kind of the dynamics of the empathy circle that it's an easier process than a lot of other processes like, you know, uh, NVC, more advanced NVC practices or restorative circles. And uh, let's see, a lot of questions are actually, oh, and it was also that a lot of the questions that came up are actually documented in the training videos, the introductory videos, and just the difficulty of bringing everything uh, into the circle um, itself, uh, it's just in terms of time. So it was, I, I really enjoyed the container of it, kind of, you know, kind of poking and kind of really looking at it because I think that's how we're going to do uh, innovation and kind of build on it. And uh, so I really appreciated uh, those comments. And um, yeah, I think that was uh, it for, in terms of my summary. So we have uh, in half an hour, we have our facilitators support group. So you can come and uh, you get 15 minutes to share kind of an issue. Like if you want to redesign the empathy circle, you know, you get your 15 minutes and say how you would like to redesign it. And, uh, and uh, if you have questions about facilitating them, we would really like everyone to facilitate an empathy circle in your community. You know, the best way to learn is, you know, try facilitating it, see how, how you can hold it. <laughs> So, see, you know, just get a sense of what it's like to hold a circle yourself and then sort of test it and learn by doing and that's uh, kind of one way to uh, spread it. So there's a support group for you to get support around that. Uh, we have um, next Wednesday, we'll be doing, I think it's next Wednesday, our uh, group, uh, our Empathy Cafe on um, sort of empathic direct action, sort of developing that concept. How do we take this to the streets and do uh, street actions around empathy? And uh, then we just did that circle with, uh, with some of the co-founders of XR about the visioning. So scheduling uh, some visioning uh, empathy cafes to kind of build on that, to 
talk about what is our vision for XR. So we want to open that to a wider audience and do some empathy cafes around that. So we're still kind of figuring the exact uh, dates and times for that. So, so that's it. So thank you very much for taking part. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, hope to see you in half an hour at the empathy uh, facilitators group. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, everyone. everybody. I see you then. And you the can start.